my new movie that I got out. You heard? Called Body Parts. The story of turquoise serial killer in the projects. A true crime story. You heard? It's an hour and a half long and it's exclusively on Patreon. So I need y'all true Gen Pop supporters to come over to the link that's in the description of this video and come watch that movie because it's exclusive, bruh. You heard it's so exclusive, I couldn't just drop it on YouTube. You feel what I'm saying? So go check that out. I need y'all to let me know what y'all think about that. This is my first full length movie pause. You feel me? Story movie, because it's just me telling the story. But what I want to know is, is this story so crazy that it could captivate you for a whole hour and a half? I need y'all to let me know, man. So I'll be tapping in on the live to check up on y'all and I'll still be uploading that heat to the page. I spent some time filming this movie for y'all, man. So I want y'all to enjoy this and I want y'all to give me that feedback and let me know what y'all think, man. Go to the Patreon link that's in the description and let's get it. L-A-Z, Z-Man, Suicide Polo with the Ski Man. Let's get it, you So you said back in the days you got niggas try to rob you for a low coat? Ain't no try to rob me. Niggas rob me, my nigga. Matter of fact, I'm gonna tell you both stories. Make a long story short, um, that same low goose I was telling y'all about with Smiley, when we went to the house party with Dello, all right, yeah. cool, I'm in a house party in Atlantic, Atlantic Towers, right there on Rockaway, Rockaway in Atlantic. Cool, so we chilling, we having a good time. Back in the days, every Friday and Saturday night, in the summertime, you dig what I'm saying, they had the best summer parties because of the pool, but in the wintertime, they had the little recreation shit and people used to have house parties. My homegirl, Vanessa, her and a girl named Keisha, they called her Black Cat. They threw the party that night. So I'm leaving. It's about maybe 1 o'clock, 1.30. So the first thing my man Senesaw said to me, he said, yo, Dice, where you going? Not Minnesota, y'all. Senesaw. My man Senesaw. I don't want no corrections. No problems over that. And then my man Senesaw said, yo, Dice, where you going? I said, yo, I'm about to go home. He said, yo, do not walk up towards Fulton. He said, them niggas on Herkimer and stuff like that. You know, them niggas kind of funny. They be playing and shit like that. But you know me. Since I'm in Atlantic Towers, since I'm going all around Brooklyn and shit like that, and my name is a little buzz, and I'm, I got a little security in my heart, but it was actually foolishness because you got to know right from wrong, and when you're in the wrong and right, a lot of people don't know the difference. It's, it's a big, big difference. What I was supposed to do was listen to my man, and I should have just walked down Atlantic to catch me a cab, because you could catch a cab anywhere back in the days in Brooklyn. Cab pull up anywhere. But me being arrogant, what I do, I start walking up Rockaway. Walking straight up Rockaway Avenue. Never forget it. They had a, like a Kennedy fried chicken on the left hand side. So as I'm walking to the Kennedy fried chicken, towards the Kennedy fried chicken, I'm not going to waste no money. I got a pocket full of money. But I'm not going to waste no money. You know what I'm saying? Because quote unquote, the train is right there, the A train. I'm going to the A train. So I'm walking up and down. I see a, like a group of like dudes. There's like maybe 10, 11 of them. And I don't know if. A lot of people can understand this, but for Brooklyn, you can understand this. Like, if it's a bunch of dudes on the sidewalk, literally to try to walk through the dudes, that's just a, like an invitation to a problem. You know what I'm saying? Because you never know what type of mindset these individuals may be in. Like us being in that back in the days, DSEP. We, we, we stand in front of a joint, you walk by us, we're going to beat you to death. Unfortunately, that was just the mindset. What I do, I tried to respect them. I walked in the street and walked around the crowd. And as I'm going towards Fulton Street, I didn't even get the Herkimer. I heard something go, you see that? So I'm thinking, like, what the fuck is they talking about? You know what I'm saying? And they talking about my coat. My guy. When I look back, it was a little dude. It looked like it was one dude at first. By the blink of two eyes, it seemed like the whole project was behind me. You know what I'm saying? That's the fear. But it was maybe about 10 or 12 dudes. So now I start running. My big ass now, I'm a little chubby back then, but you know, I can move, you know what I'm saying? Don't get it twisted. The chubbier, the faster you run. I'm telling you, I brakes on these niggas. They can't even catch me. I run all the way to Rockaway and Fulton, run downstairs in the train station. When I run to the train station, it's after one o'clock at night. So now, back in the days, a lot of older people could understand and relate to this. There wasn't the, like the jump, the, you couldn't jump over the turnstile on the backside of Atlantic and Rockaway because they had like these cages where you would have to put the token in. It was like walking through the um, beginning of ANS back in the days. It was like a revolving cage because it wasn't no... The, 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 the lady that was supposed to be at the 
the um desk, the dispatcher, there was nobody working there because it was late night. So this particular station on Rockaway and Fulton, you had to put the coin in and walk through. I had no token. So I done left them. I run downstairs. By the time I get to it and try to go through the door, it's nothing I could do. When I spin around, the same little short dude I saw, he had a shotgun. Hand on the finger on the trigger. So now my whole life is like like really flashing through my mind because I'm like, yo, what the fuck is about to go down? These niggas say, yo, check this out. Take that coat off, big man. I don't want to kill you. Like I said, I had the black and blue logo song with the cookie. Polo USA down my arm. I took the jacket off. Niggas went in my pocket. I had like a little $93. But back then it seemed like 5000 But they took like $93 from me and that coat. I had on a short sleeve Liz Claiborne denim shirt. And I had on a pair of Claiborne khaki pants that look like the Ralph Lauren pants now. And I had on a pair of 40 below 10s. The only thing they took from me was my coat and my money. You dig what I'm saying? And they broke out. But the sad part about it is I didn't know that my mother didn't know that I was going to use that coat that weekend. She went to Atlantic City and she wound up leaving some money in the small pocket right there by the cookie. She used to hide money, unfortunately, in my house because I told people my pops started getting high. You dig what I'm saying? So when she gets back now, I got to explain to her that the coat that she bought me from Saks Fifth Avenue was wrong. And now she says, oh my God, you ain't going to believe this. I said, what's that? She said, I had mommy rent money in your pocket. Now, look how God worked. If my grandmother and grandfather wouldn't have owned that building, you dig what I'm saying? My mom's could have got possibly got put in the street. But that's not the time I wanted to tell niggas about. It's two times. This is what turned me into who I became. And I felt as though I was, like, really victimized. And, and this is the part of that, that people don't really think about. I don't really think nobody... Well, at least I didn't because I was come from good people. I've never really woke up and said to myself, I'm going to go outside and hurt nobody. I never really woke up and said, I want to go outside and just get into something by myself. Unfortunately, this is the, 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 the topsy-turvy about being in a home and a single child with family members that actually have a little bit of money. You know what I'm saying? You, 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 you kind of de develop a resentment against your parents for their fortunate situations because your, your your best friend's mothers are addicted to crack and co co cocaine and stuff like that your best friends they don't have curfews like my mother used to tell me to be in the house by nine o'clock p.m in the summertime because that's when the sun went down i had friends that broke day every night and didn't even know if they was gonna see their mothers or fathers because of that crack error you know what i'm saying so the whole situation of of, of the robbing and the stealing yeah that came because of things that was done to me. I became a person that, that tried to make people feel the same thing I felt. You dig what I'm saying? Like when I got, when they took that little goose from me, it was a feeling inside of me that just, just, just stripped my whole, my whole sense of like reality and, and as of a man, like yo, it's the, to be vulnerable like that to the fact where you don't know if somebody's gonna kill you for something material. You didn't do anything to them. You know what I'm saying? But we was from that era. You didn't have to do something to somebody. Some people just had that evil spirit on them. And then I wound up getting another logo. It's a white one with a red and blue on the side. It was actually a replica to a triple fat goose my mom's that got me that I got teased for. And I'm coming home from school. I was going to IS390. I'll never forget this. It's like one of the situations you said last, like you say, chasing your dick goes wrong. Make a long story short, I'm coming from IS390. I live on Utica and Prospect. I live on 17 Utica Avenue. Utica and Prospect. So instead of me walking straight down Park Place from IS390, I decide to cut through St. John's Park following two girls from the school. One of them name was Aria. I was interested in her. Make a long story short, when we get to St. John's Park, a couple of dudes from Wicksville and Aria was interested in her and her friend wound up walking off. So now I'm in St. John's Park walking towards like, with a handball court on the backside, it's like an alleyway. This is broad daylight. This is getting out of school it's had to be about 3 20 3 30. you dig what i'm saying as i'm coming down the parkway i had a little clip of a roach that was in my pocket and i said i couldn't go to the house and smoke because my grandmother was home my grandmother and grandfather worked for king's county hospital but she had actually slipped so she was home during the day and i knew she was funny like my grandmother you you come around her she'd be like why your eyes look like that why your eyes so glossy what's that smell because she didn't smoke cigarettes or marijuana and when you come around people quote unquote they don't do things they could pick up on it so what i was saying i'm sitting in the park and I'm, i light my little spliff up my little my little clip up 
trying to be cute. Man walks up. This is all seven years ago, seven years plus, and I ain't got no resentment towards him. You know what I'm saying? What year you said? This, what year you said this was though? This is um, this is eighty three. 83? 83, 83, 84. Yeah, 84, because I was in IS390. Yo, Laz, don't do that, bro. I'm 49 years old. You're supposed to be my man. Don't do that to me, son. <laughs> and you I had... No, nah, I'm saying... I'm be... 17. Hold nah, on. I'm talking right. I'm about... 17. I'm talking about because of the low gooses. You had the white You had the white low goose Yo, in 80... Come on, nigga. Yo, all jokes aside, bro. When I was telling you about me and Dello talking last, like real rap, I'm going to give you Dello number just to talk to him. Yo, I'm not offending nobody, and I'm not even going to get so people can... Say what they want to say. Like my man Dello said this to me. I'm going to say it. My nigga Dello just said this to me the night of rum party. He said, Dice, you was a low life before niggas knew what low life with Polo was. My mother worked for Saks Fifth Avenue, lads. Like, I can send you pictures, my nigga, of me at my christening with jewelry on. So, what, what, so what, what year was that with the Rockaway and Fulton? And hold on, you said on that Rockaway and phone, you talking about you you went down on the side where there is no token booth, where it's just a it's just a revolving gate that you could go through. At that particular time, at the night, see, back in the days, after twelve and one o'clock, with the with the, at the train stations, people didn't work like 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 say for instance, like you see, there's Utica Avenue, the A train is Utica Avenue right there on Utica and Fulton, and then there's the Schenectady side of the A train. There would be somebody at the A train side of Fulton because that's like the majority of the crowd. But at the back side of Schenectady, there would be nobody in the booth. Like I said, I had them beat, lads. I'm chubby and all that, but I smoked them. They got an outran some of the best police from the 77th. Johnny Jack Rabbit, Mitchell Tiff, like real rap. But anyway. What year was that though? That was also 82 when with nah, the um I'm gonna tell you right now. Because when I was in junior high school, I was 13 years old. You know what I'm saying? I got left back one year and I went to high school. I went to the boys and girls high school when I was 14. You understand what I'm saying? So this got to be all right. I graduated. I grad. No, this was this was then 83 when I first got when they first got me for that for the um the white, red and blue logos. You no, know, no, they first got me for the black and blue logos. Yeah, that was like 84, 85. But yeah. the, the Atlantic Towers joint? Yeah, yeah, that was then, bro. All right, like, so, mother... so, so this one right here, the white one, was before this. This was, was before that. All right, so you said you before that. So you said you was in St. John's. You was lighting your split. I was in St. John's Park. See, the first logos that was when, when when trying to be tough. You know what I'm saying? Instead of being smart, got me wrong. This logos right here, this one was chasing your dick go wrong when you're a little kid. You understand what I'm saying to you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so make a long story short, I'm sitting down and a dude um. I'm just gonna say he's from Eastern Parkway and um he's from Eastern Parkway and Schenectady. I'ma speak about his brother and how the situation came up. So if anybody know his brother, so they'll know who he is, but you know, it ain't no no love loss. So he was kids, he was doing what he was doing, and I respect his move. He slid up on me and pulled out like a little, like a little dirty, like 38 or something like that. He was like, yo, take that coat off, don't move, don't move, don't make no noise, don't make no noise. You try to run, I'ma shoot you. I'm like, yo. What is it with these polo gooses? You know what I'm saying? Like, this shit don't make no sense. I'm taking this shit off. And I'm giving him the coat. He walked straight down. Like, that would be St. Mark's because the alley in, in um, St. John's Park connects to St. Mark's. On the left side, it goes to Albany Projects through the middle, going straight to St. Mark's. That's straight Mark's, St. Mark's Avenue. So when he takes the coat, I automatically go to the house. Like I tell y'all, my, my uncle's name is Ice Water from Utica Avenue. I run to him, I'm like, yo, check this out, niggas robbed me. He was like, stop playing. I'm like, yo, niggas robbed me for another coat, man. He was like, where did you get robbed at? I said, St. John's Park. He was like, who robbed you? I'm like, I don't know. I really don't know. I really don't know who robbed me. Like, all jokes sides. So I described him to my uncle. And he said, describe him again. I told him, he said, yo, that sound like X, Y, Z. So make a long story short, my mother gets home now. I done told my pops. My pops was a crackhead. So at this particular time, he was a gangster. But but his mind wasn't. Thank God, his mind wasn't really to the fact where he was that aggressive at that particular time over me getting my coat raw. Because unfortunately, he was like literally out there getting high. He was in shock. He was in an awe and all that. He wanted to do more, but my pops was this one. He was really like out there. Like he's skinny. He ain't even got his shit together like that. If he went out there, he probably got beat up or some shit like that. So make a long story short, my mother get home. She beefing. She like, yo, what happened? I told her. My mother snatches me up and take me to the 77th precinct. 
sitting in the 77 precinct. She talking to the police and all that nonsense. Mind you, yeah, I don't want to be in the precinct. I do not want to be in the motherfucking precinct. So that's the same day we go back home. The next day, my mother doesn't go to work. My mother was like, yo, we gonna get to the bottom of this because I guess my uncle and them, they in the street, they doing their investigating or whatever. And they, they got the right person, but they, it just really didn't get accurate yet. So it got misconstrued. You know what I'm saying? It got turned to the fact that the person that robbed me him and, his, him and his brother was so known for terrorizing people in the hood, the detectives just wanted them niggas off the street. They wanted either his brother, the person that actually robbed me, or the person that they arrested for the robbery of me. That cool. Back in the days, they used to have this thing called um, Alana. You dig what I'm saying? So my mother winds up taking me to the precinct that afternoon. This is a little bit after five. We get in the precinct. The person that robbed me is not in this lineup. But the person's brother is in this lineup. The person's brother is my man, God bless the dead, Sean White, AKA Robocop. You dig what I'm saying? So the police is literally telling me that man right there took your coat. This is a, this, this is the vendetta, like the police with the 77 precinct, they really had vendettas against certain people that was in the street, whether it was selling drugs or robberies. If they couldn't catch them and have people to, to literally point them out for certain things they tried to do things like i'm from this like the era of the 77 precinct they put guns on you they put crack on you they'll roll up on you drop crack on you and say it's yours just to get you in the precinct so they're telling me that my man robocop robbed me i'm like i don't know that man my mother looking at me going you better tell him that that's the person that robbed that coat i don't care what they saying that's him i said ma that's not the person that robbed me and i don't know him so we leave go to the house my mother is very upset she's very upset with me i mean we're walking up Utica Avenue. I tell you, I'm from Utica and Prospect. The precinct is right there on St. Mark's and Bergen. My mother was so upset with me. She was like, I don't believe you did that. I don't believe you. I said, my number one, that ain't the person that robbed me. Simple and plain. So that whole night, and this is what I will say about my pops. He ain't come home that night. But we thought it was just one of the nights that he was out there doing his thing. Nah, my pops was out there on, on some Beretta shit, like real rap. Him and my uncle trying to find out X, Y, Z. The next morning, Maybe about 6.30, 7 o'clock, my bell was ringing on the top floor. I go to the window, and it happens to be my nigga Robocop, Sean White, God bless his soul. When I come downstairs, he got a paper bag. It's a C-Town paper bag. We used to have a C-Town shopping market on um, St. John's and Utica back in the day. So make a long story short, it's a C-Town paper bag, and it's my coat inside the paper bag folded up. Back then, everybody wasn't really calling me Dice. A few people was calling me Dice, but they knew me as DeMond. Some people couldn't pronounce my name. So the nigga Robocop looked at me and said, yo, DeMond, you one of the realest little niggas I know. Don't worry about that shit with my brother. It ain't gonna never happen again. So his brother, ironically, has my name. My name is Dice. The dude that robbed me name is Dice. You dig what I'm saying? Which is my man, Sean, quote unquote brother. Sean was on Rikers Island and the police threw Clorox in his eyes. It was a big lawsuit. Let me tell you the type of dude he was. He was a good dude too. He had a big lawsuit. He came home from the lawsuit. He wanted to buy a house in Philadelphia. He's coming back and forth to New York, you know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, he wound up going back to Philadelphia and allegedly, the young lady that he was dealing with, may God bless her soul, had a man in the home and um, he let the man go. And unfortunately, Killed the young lady, may God bless her soul, and her brought his brought, brought the child back to the mother in Brooklyn, the grandmother, excuse me, in Brooklyn, and then he went to the um the Riviera Hotel on um Atlantic Avenue and killed himself. This he was 37 years old. His name was Sean White, aka Robocop from Eastern Parkway in Troy, one of the realest niggas in the world. But them two, them these these two situations that happened in my life is what kind of catapulted me to the wrong direction see when you're a single kid when you're coming home like you're the single child this is true facts maybe people can relate maybe they can't when you when you're when you're a single child a single boy you know what i'm saying and you're growing up in a home where you got a mother that's busting her ass like i said going to sax fifth avenue working for prime america on the weekend going to white castles four days a week on utica avenue and then you have a father that that you admired so much that fell under the addiction of crack cocaine that devastated uh, a million families all over the world. It kind of, it kind of, it kind of puts a stress on a child. Their parents, I don't really think, understand. Number one, don't know yo 
grown boy want to see his mother going through anything. That's just a fact. You dig what I'm saying? And then when my pops went to jail, four on four for a murder, and he came home, the only person like like that was really there with me and my mother, besides my grandmother and grandfather, was me and my mother. Like I tell people, she was 19 when she had me, so she was a kid herself. But that's that's the reasons why, quote unquote, I started, I guess, gravitating to the friends that I thought I should have gravitated to because I had friends in the street that at young ages people did not play with them. And I and people like when I was younger, I was just the good, I was the class clown. Like I was a straight up nerd, went to school, didn't bother nobody. But then when you get around people that don't understand that you're just not that like it's some children that 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 are not aggressive as other children are and that can be a sign of weakness to some children people fail to realize kids pick at kids they don't understand what they're doing even if they intentionally in their heart do it they're doing what they saw or they're emulating what was portrayed or exposed to them and that's what pushed me and a couple of other cats i know in the street because what i told myself was them two times when i was robbed i felt so victimized them feelings i promised in my heart i said i would never go through again and then when i started running around the street robbing acting stupid it was all cries of help like i used to get a joy out of seeing the fear in people's faces when they had to comply to the robbery you dig what i'm saying just like when me and you was talking earlier last like like a few of my decept compadres and i love y'all all let me hear this i'm gonna say this straight up i love y'all all but some of us have different agendas and different goals in life. I can't walk the walk of another man. I can only walk the walk of mine. And to the people that I may have offended, speaking my truth, it was never nothing but love and it's always gonna be nothing but love. It's gonna be decent for life. But people fail to realize, I did not wanna stay in the stage of um, terrorizing people or being a tyrant. You dig what I'm saying? When I used to walk around, people used to go the other way. Older people would look down on me because of the fear that they didn't know what came with me just being in the presence or in the area. That's not a way to live. I got I got dudes that the way we was living when we was 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20, they still living like that today. And unfortunately, that's not who I am. I love them all. I pray for them. Because a lot of us, like, like I was telling you earlier, lads, a lot of us are suffering from mental diseases that we don't deal with. And, and and for some reason they just tell us because we came like like you're supposed to be tough you're supposed to be this man or whatever no they teach us to suppress reality and our pain and our feelings and and like i was telling you earlier when you suppress certain things it builds up it builds up aggression and it turns into the form of a balloon and then it's going to explode you dig what i'm saying it's people that things that done happened to them 20 30 years ago that they didn't talk about that's actually affecting the way that they live today and I'm not going to be that person. You dig what I'm saying? Like, I'm not proud of the times when I was running around carrying guns and 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 and, and doing that robbing thing. Like my man Mustafa told me, God bless his soul. He said, yo, what you going to be, man? He said, you're going to be a sucker. You're going to be a man. You know what I'm saying? He said, you're moving like a sucker. He said, why do you think it's cool to just sit up and pray and try to capitalize on other people doing other things? If that's what you want to get into, make your mark. Plant your seed. You dig what I'm saying? Show them who you are. But just to run around here trying to take, 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 take. One day somebody, unfortunately, is going to catch you or sit back waiting for you to come and line you up. And like I said, if it wasn't for people like Mustafa, Johnny Greenlee, um, Big Garmel, my Uncle Ice Water, my pops, um, you know what I'm saying? Big Botch, Stud, you know what I'm saying? Um, Trav, God bless the dead. Third. Bonity, you know what I'm saying? The whole gully man crew. It's like certain things that was taught to me that I didn't understand. That's why people have to be very careful of what and who they expose their children to. Because, like, as a child, I'm thinking it's cool to run around with this tough guy era and, and, and install this fear in people and walk around like I'm the baddest person in the world. And, and I believe just like anybody else. That's why every day I wake up, I praise God, I praise Allah for waking me up, you know what I'm saying? For giving me the sense to see, quote unquote, I was bugging. Because there's people in the hood, I was talking to a man, a friend of mine by the name of Gabby. I was in Brooklyn last week. And he came to me, he was on Utica Avenue. Matter of fact, I'm gonna send this to him. 
he was telling me that um how he was around a a young man or whatever and because Gabby is a little older now a big dread from Jamaica he a little older now they was like he said he said he seemed like, he said nice to see him like the money they try to try to deal with me a certain way try to try to handle me like me one kill one of them he said somebody just tell him to go suck out your mother and when I looked at him and said I said yo Gabby all jokes aside when I was coming up, if you tell somebody to suck their moms, you know what I'm saying, or invite them to the Frank, that's either a reason to kill them or a reason to get killed. And he was like, yo, Dice, you know, they never really care because, you know, if a mom them come up to them, he said, yo, I said, yo, if a dude came to me today, all just side lads, I know dudes may think what I'm about to say is a, is a joke, but it's the honest to God truth. And my dudes that know me know this is the truth. And people that know how I move probably be like, yo, this dude is grew up. If somebody came to me today and literally told me, yo, suck your mother, like all jokes aside, go suck your mother. Back in the days, I'd have, I'd have pulled my knife on my gun. But today, in this day and age, I'm gonna pray for them because when you say something, number one, a person that tells me to suck my mother could have never known my mother. You understand what I'm saying to you? Like when I was in school, I used to fight for that shit. My mother said, these people don't know me. A person that literally looked at me and tell me, yo, go suck your moms. If you really met my mother, Sharon McLeod Young, it, 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 would, it, would, it would burn your mouth to say something like that about that woman. A person says something to you like that, literally listen to what I'm saying to you. If a person says something like, you'll suck my dick or you'll go suck your mother or I kill your kids. This is a mental illness because usually these terms are initiations of aggravation that could end, to, end in the result of death or imprisonment. So if a person's says something like that like if a person was to say something like that to me last on some real like to say some shit like that to me the reason why i gotta walk away from them because they have to be crazy like literally anybody that know my past or my resume or who i am as a man i'm the same person today don't get it twisted i'm gonna demand respect wherever i go and i'm gonna show that wherever i am you understand what i'm saying to you so once that line get crossed whatever happens happens you know what i'm saying because any any time a person wants to talk to me or Speak to me about something that may be upsetting with them or I may have done it. They felt as though it was unjust to them. As long as you come to res me respectfully as a man, I have to understand that I have hurt you or I've made you upset. And if you're really my man and my friend, I have to sit there and listen to the pain that I may have caused you, whether I agree with it or not. But the disrespect, all that running up, yo, yo, I'm going to do, none of that is happening. None of, none of that is happening. You know what I'm saying? And then if you have to be around a group of individuals that don't know how to talk to you or treat you as a human being it's time for you to disassociate yourself from these human beings this is the problem with a lot of us that came up in the hood really getting money around stuff we emulated what was wrong and it became us like like my mother said a sponge will absorb water and hold that water so that the murders we saw coming up the um drug deals we saw coming up the prostitution we saw coming up the crooked cops we saw coming up you know what i'm saying the struggling of the old women quote unquote that they got kids that mentally wasn't right or ignored in school like like a lot of teachers a lot of teachers back in the days ps191 that's one school for sure that there were a lot of teachers in that school that really didn't care about the well-being of children and this is what messes up the growth and the development of children you dig what i'm saying if you teach a child from young hatred that's all what that child is gonna show. And it's a tough dude out there, tougher than any tough dude. Remember that, you know what I'm saying? The toughest done died from Jesse James, the Billy the Kid, and you know what I'm saying? Al Capone and all the so-called gangsters from the street niggas, God bless, from the Tweeties, you know what I'm saying? To my man M, you know what I'm saying? To Sean, like, like certain things people do, you have to recognize there's gonna be a consequence to your words. Some people don't really live by that sticks and stones or hurt my bones and all that. No, some people, you say the wrong thing to them, that's why I move the way I move. Some people, if you say the wrong thing to them, it could cost you your life. And people fail to realize, every killer got somebody that love them. Everybody that was killed got somebody that cried for them. And this world is so messed up. Instead of people just sitting up, understanding that if you just sit down and talk, instead of reacting off of aggression and instinct, a lot of things can be quote unquote forgiven.